Hey, what's up guys? How's it going? This right here is the 2022 Acura NSX Type S and I'm going to give you guys an outside walk around, an inside tour and show you pretty much everything you need to know about it. All right, guys. So yes, this is the Type S, meaning this is the final, pretty much the final version of this supercar and Acura is not making anything after this. At least there's no plans. There's no announcements, no rumors speculating uh, for the successor to this Acura NSX. And the Type S has a lot of differences compared to the regular, quote unquote, regular, you know, NSX that make it unique um both appearance wise as well as under the hood that we'll get into uh so let's just let's just talk about it right guys the front design completely different completely unique this gives me like bumblebee vibes and there actually were a bunch of bees around this car earlier that kind of flew away uh but honestly this was the design they should have started out with i don't know what they were holding on to uh when they made their first design i mean they had that accurate you know front beak but get rid of that you know we don't we don't want that we want this this looks so good. You do get the same, you know, jewel style LED headlights, daytime running lights go down here, kind of that chicane that they, they've been putting on all their vehicles. But if you come down, everything here is functional. Functional vents that go into heat exchangers up front. You do get a carbon fiber front splitter. All of them have the carbon fiber package standard. Uh, there really aren't many options that are on the, the Type S specifically. It's just a paint color and interior. Um, so yeah, you can't get them anymore because they've only made 350 of these and all of them have been sold. 150 went to the US and the other 200 went outside of the US. So, but up front you do get uh, vents that go to uh, a heat exchanger up front, which we'll show you because we'll open up this panel, the, the hood. I'll just show you what's underneath there. You do get more vents off to the side, left and right. And then you do get these heat extractors here, um, which I'll show you once we, once we open up this panel. Uh, going around the side guys, you get carbon ceramic brakes up front. Uh, those are your brake calipers. You can actually change the color of the brake calipers. There's a few different options, but I really like the look of these wheels and the wrapped in Pirelli P0 tires measuring 245, 35, 19s up front. And you also do a good event out here for extracting some, some air and probably relieving pressure from underneath the, the wheel arch. I'm not 100% sure though. I'm not an aerodynamic engineer on this project, so I cannot tell you. Going to the side view mirrors, you get the nice two-tone yellow, goes across and the black around. And this thing does not have blind spot monitoring, which I was surprised for a 2022 vehicle. And this car has been out since 2017. The fact that it doesn't have it is kind of surprising, but um, visibility isn't terrible. You don't get much out the side, uh, but we'll talk about that when we when we get inside. Uh, if you walk up to it far enough and get back close to it again, it will open up the door handles like this, you know, pops out, it's your door handle. You open it up, close it. Pretty straightforward, easy to operate, but you do get a keyhole to get inside as well in case you know electronics aren't working or whatnot you need to get in an emergency come down here you'll see their carbon fiber uh side skirt really nice very tasteful and then it, you know, there's a nice little curve feature right here and then you have your type s it's just a vinyl uh that's on it but because of the type s there's at least some indication on the outside there isn't nsx badging slapped on the outside they put it on like the brake calipers as you saw in the front and there's in the rear but we'll get into that in a little bit. You have this huge honeycomb vent, feeds air into your heat exchanger right there. And then you have the flying buttress top with some more vents over here. And that extracts hot air from the engine because it does it pretty warm when you open it up after driving it pretty hard. Fuel cap up top, nothing really crazy there. And then uh, carbon ceramic uh, discs in the back as well as NSX on the brake caliper. And then these ones are 305, 30, R20. So staggered wheels, 20 in the back, 19s in the front. Looks great. Fits the, the side profile of this vehicle really nice. Let me just take a step back here. Looks really good. Front to rear. You notice uh, the, the roof line kind of peaks a little ahead of the where someone's head's gonna sit. Uh, so rear, so headroom in the towards that back end isn't ideal for taller people. Those seats don't go up and down, but we'll talk about that later. Let's, let's not get ahead of ourselves. Uh, going around the back here, you notice you get a carbon fiber wing as part of that carbon fiber package. The rear taillights have not changed. They look the same, but they look good. You have vents in the back right there, and then a very aggressive diffuser. Uh, so it looks it looks amazing, as well as your quad tipped exhaust. That go out of the center exit down there, and you kind of you see me in the reflection of this gloss back material right there. But yeah, quad tipped exhaust. Uh, they couldn't do three because that'd be a Integra Type R, uh, Type S, excuse me, or a Civic Type R type thing. Uh, so they didn't. Um, and then the same thing, you know, really looks nice in the back. You can see uh, there is a vent over here. You kind of can't see it actually. And then flying buttresses, you can see the pass-throughs left and right. 
Uh, but let's open up the uh, the trunk real quick and talk about that. So this is the key, NSX, Type S, very standard Acura Honda key, unlock, and then we hold it for the trunk. Gives you a nice little tiny pop, nothing really too reassuring, honestly. Just lift this up, and real quick, your camera's right there. So your rear view camera, not the greatest resolution. Uh, that lifts up with your, your lift back. Go on the trunk, it's not that big, guys. Uh, it's pretty tiny. And there's this awkward just bumps, uh, one here as well. And then uh, nothing really here. You lift this, you have your tools or emergency tire sealant kit. So, but who cares about that? Let's talk about the, the engine, guys. 3.5 liter twin turbo V6, turbo straight from the GT3 car. They literally, like part number, identical, like slapped it on this, make 600 horsepower combined with that electric motor for the two in the front, one that's made to this uh, engine in the rear, going out through a nine speed DCT, 490 some pound feet of torque, zero to 60 in 2.8 seconds, full carbon fiber, looks so good. And look how low the engine sits relative to like the top engine bay. Uh, it's a pretty, does sit pretty low. And then you get a glass up front that's the separating you between the engine and the interior of the vehicle. And it just, it looks cool. Notice real quick, this is, they're only making 350 of them. All the media vehicles are zero, zero, zero out of zero, zero, zero. So they're not technically production uh, cars that are gonna be for sale. So just, that's why you're seeing that number play on here. But the other ones will have a serialized number of zero, zero, one out of 350 or number two, number three, whatever it is. So um, that's the rear lift back. Let's hop inside. Actually, hold up. I didn't even tell you guys. This thing has a full carbon fiber roof. Looks amazing. And yeah, the carbon fiber work is amazing so even if the door hounds aren't popped up you can kind of just lift it up from here door should open you're close enough to it and you just open the door and the doors are pretty straightforward nothing crazy going to get suede leather um classic acura honda switch gear right there and then you do get a nice tasteful like aluminum plastic uh, but like a shiny um material on the door handle gloss back where the actual door handles are two memory seats your speakers as part of your els sound system but if i go inside you'll see i mean this one's been pretty heavily driven you get some wear on the, on the leather not gonna lie but we'll be a little forgiving here guys because this car has like around eight thousand miles on it which they're not eight thousand light miles or eight thousand miles of every single person who enjoys driving and reviewing cars for a living uh, driving this like it's their first time. So they've been beaten up. I'd say there's like equivalent to like 70,000 miles on this car. People getting in and out, it's been driven on the track at multiple different events. Uh, so this is not like a, a uh, you know, a garage queen type situation. Going to the power um, seat situation, it's only forward, back, uh, sliding, and then uh, backrest tilts forward and back. It's in the lumbar. There's no height adjustment, which they should because headroom is limited. If you're too tall, you can't get a helmet in there if you're on a, on a racetrack, which is annoying. It's preventing a lot of people from getting in this car and driving it. Aluminum pedals, very well placed in the pedal box. Nice uh, design and they're good quality. Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna hop inside real quick because that's pretty much it for like the door. Get a little tweeter up there, but let's get inside here, guys. Close this up. I like how it nice it molds into the top here. You get carbon fiber on the gauge cluster. Nice little accurate animation popping up here. If you take a step back from there, you'll see. Got a nice leather and carbon fiber on the steering wheel up top and then down here by the spokes and then wrapping around the buttons and the switch gear. Very nice steering wheel, very nice bolstering here. Like you, when you don't like, you don't see it up front, but look at the bolstering, how aggressive it is. Like you have a really good grip on it. Um, and it has a lot of attention. It looks a little weird, but I think it is a really nice steering wheel. Very easy to grab onto, you get good control and it feels good, it's good quality leather. Um, and horn, sounds like a normal, Acura Honda horn. Um, and, you know, you got paddle shifters here. I'm not sure if they're metal or not, um, but they feel nice. And this DCT shifts great. We'll, we'll talk about that when we go in for a drive. Um, push bar, button start. We'll uh, start it up real quick, actually. It's going to be in quiet mode. You can have settings, actually, depending on um, what you want. You can schedule, like, in the morning, it always starts in quiet mode. And then later in the day, it starts in sport mode. So we'll turn on the engine. But now we're in quiet mode, we're chilling. You have your dynamic mode selector here, AC controls, older touchscreen, I don't wanna get into it. it, has Apple CarPlay, Android Auto, 
volume knobs, volume control is a little slider, which is annoying. Um, and you have your volume controls here, which you're probably gonna use most of the time. Who cares? Not gonna get into that. Suede up top, leather here, more so. This is like, you know, it's plastic trim around, which which night it matches the vibe. Type S embroidered on the glove box. You open that up, you can take out your cup holders, which attaches right here. We're not gonna do that because we don't want that. Um, very standard Acura Honda push button gear selector, P, R, and D. Press again for manual mode. If you just want to use the paddle shifters in drive mode, you can still take command and, and shift the gears yourself. Let's say in sport plus mode, you want to just, uh, it's holding gear too high. As a second gear, you want to get into third, fourth, you can shift it and it'll, it'll listen. It works really well. You just get heated seats, no ventilated seats. But like I was talking about the seats earlier, even though the adjustment isn't great, they are so, so comfortable. I drove this for like a hundred miles straight and it was just so easy to drive because these seats are so well padded, but they're also really well bolstered. Uh, it's a very good seat uh, setup. So I was impressed with that. I don't have an issue with headroom because I'm vertically challenged, but we're not gonna get into that. Uh, headliner on the on the top is suede, feels amazing. Your Acura Link, your SOS, your garage opener, and then you have uh, your switch if you wanna tie that to just on all the time, door off, pretty straightforward stuff. Sun visor, no mirror, who cares? You don't have to see yourself. You're in a car, you already look cool, you know? Um, and then they just fold down. They don't rotate to the side. So that's a little bit annoying. So yeah, just keep that in mind. As far as storage goes, guys, I do have a USB cable that's here. I'm just routing from the back. You get a little compartment there. Storage down there. A little cubby over here. That's what I've been sliding my phone. It fits pretty nicely. Boop, you know, just like that. And then you get a speaker in the back for the, back for the ELS studio sound system, one up top. And then, um, I don't know where else other ones are, but they're all around the cabin. And it sounds decent, uh, amazing speakers. But the one thing I mean, we'll, we'll take this for a drive real quick. Um, we'll talk about how it drives when we get to that part. I, you know, I won't get ahead of myself, uh, but visibility is good. Uh, the blind spot monitoring is annoying, like I said. Um, there's no front lift. There is. I have been able to find it. Parking sensors are pretty rough. It just tells you if something's close and like a couple bars and that's kind of your resolution. Um, oh, I forgot to show you guys. Traction control off buttons right here. These blank switches, which is crazy to see on an NSX, honestly. They should put like a front lift up here. Uh, Honda, standard issue, turn signal in stock. And then your headlights, I'm sorry, your headlight, windshield wiper stock right there. Um, you can tell. It's just, it's a part, it's been part, which is fine. I don't, I don't think that's bad. They work and they feel, they feel all right. Um, let's talk about the drive modes real quick. So you have your dynamic mode selector. You turn over once, get into sport mode. And look at this right here, you have your powertrain, SHAWD, super handling all-wheel drive, VSA, vehicle stability assist, get back into it so it shows it again, suspension and steering, it shows you how aggressive they're getting throughout it. Turn again, sport plus mode, powertrain gets a little more aggressive, super handling all-wheel drive gets more aggressive, vehicle stability assist becomes a little less intervening, um, and then suspension and steering, if I hold it, after into sport mode, to the right, let go, this screen turns off and you're in track mode and that's what enables all uh, all the performance you want to get out of the vehicle and uh, allows for launch control. So you want to wake up the screen, you can, you tap it, it turns it on, uh, but because it's in track mode, it wants to just turn it off and it shows you the NSX on there. So let's, uh, let's take this for a drive and uh, we can talk about it real quick. And I'm going to be in sport mode just right now. Drive. Turns off the parking brake and we are good. This also has brake hold. So that's also nice more um i wish there was a seat height adjustment uh because if you feel like let's say really short you can lift up the seat a little bit you know but personally i've had any issues with it um so in quiet mode it lets you actually we're in sport so even in sport it lets you run off the electric motors for a good amount like just kind of around a parking lot and stuff and uh to in quiet mode, it'll be way more likely to stay in electric mode, even at higher speeds. So, probably speed bump. I do want to be slow about this because this car is low and it could, you know, bottom out kind of on the breakover angle. I got to be careful and stuff with that because, yeah, this car is very low. There's no front lift, which I wish there was because that front overhang is insane. And you can tell it's it's been scraped even before before me. It wasn't me, I swear. Uh, so like even these, we're gonna go over some like little spikes for tires and stuff. Those will graze the underbody, which just does not sound good. But I'm doing my best here to avoid scraping 
go over here. Uh, you heard a little you know, tickle the bottom right there. Go to angle here. Ooh. So there's a sensor, is it just warning object approaching? Like, no crap, of course there is an object approaching. It's the road. Um, and then sport mode, I get on a little bit. Engine turns on in sport. I think that's like the better driving mode. Quiet's way too like reserved. It will not let you really get on. You floored in quiet mode, will not like, you'll actually get through it. I'm in quiet mode right now. Really getting on it. It's keeping it in third gear. It's not shifting down into second. Go into sport. I was already in a, in a, in a, it shifts right away near the blow off valves. Um, third gear was, I guess, the right gear for that. But in Sport Plus, it'll be in second gear. But listen to this. You hear the blow off valves, a little ways get, sounds so good. Uh, the V6 sounds like a V6. It doesn't sound like amazing, uh, which is a little bit of a letdown, but it just is what it is. But the turbo noises make this uh, a very nice driving experience. And then now the engine's off in Sport mode. I'm just coasting along. And it really depends on the battery's uh, state of charge, how much percent battery. Do you get that gauge right there that shows you how full the battery is? So that's just how you know. And if you're in pure, like you're driving, it drains pretty quick. It's not meant for range. It's meant for power delivery, uh, not for energy storage. So there's different chemistry. It's kind of like the Corvette E-Ray that's gonna be coming out. And that's gonna be cheaper than this, which is crazy to think because it's also quicker. It's gonna be 2.5 seconds. We're not talking about that car too much, but like just to put things into perspective, um, this car was, this car came out years earlier and had this had that kind of tech um again like i'm not gonna be too hard on this like car as far as like right quality there's like a slight rattle again this car has been this car has been driven hard like but it's it's still holding up really nice uh it's I and mean, aside from those little things it feels solid it's really well insulated you do get the noise you want on a longer drive i really enjoyed it and on on the highway i was getting 24 mpg 24.6 and I was cruising at like 75, 80. Like I was not like really trying to hypermile it or anything. So it uh, it did really well. It's just the bummer in quiet mode that it just really reserves. So if you really want to get on like on the spot, you would have to change modes, get on it, or just go into manual mode, shift yourself. That's another way to do it. But that like on-demand performance, you just kind of have to be ready for it. Uh, you can't just spontaneously like get on it in that quiet, even in sport mode, it's a little reserved too. So, but man, when this thing is in full like performance mode with uh, Sport Plus and your launch control, we'll, we'll launch here real quick. It is amazing. It has cruise control. It doesn't have adaptive cruise control. Like, you could tell like the the architecture, like the tech that it's, that's, it comes with, is it's from an older time period. But you really don't get it for that. This thing is gonna, I think, go up in value. It's just like the first gen NSX. No one appreciated it at the time. They made a very few amount, so no one really wanted to order them, even when production wasn't limited before the Type S. Now, they're done making them. You kind of want them. You can, you can see the, the used car market. Actually, maybe they don't. I haven't done the research, honestly. But I think give this some time, and you, there'll be a, a community of people who really appreciate this and value it for what it's worth. The other thing, though, is because of how special and like unique this car is, it gets so many looks. So I mean, the bright yellow helps but it gets so much attention on the road. People thumbs up, peace signs, waving, staring. Um, I saw like an R32 GTR and he was riding along with it. was just a vibe, like this is a JDM legend in a way. Uh, it's not getting the same like fan fare as like the, hold on, let's. Let's go to the right here, to the left here. Go into track mode. And we're going to launch it. Ready? Foot firmly on the brakes. Foot firmly on the gas. It says launch mode ready. And it goes. Oh my God. Puts the power down. Bangs the gears. And it is just so stable. It is so easy. And it actually sounds, look at the downshift. I'm not downshifting guys. It wants to be in the power van. It just shifts it for you. Let's get out of track mode. Boy, that was amazing. It wakes up. This in quiet mode versus this in like sport plus or track mode, very different cars, very different. Nothing, no relation. You, you can feel like you're going in like a Honda inside in one of them and a freaking GT3 race car in the other. It is, it comes to life in the sport plus and the track mode, which I appreciate. 
So, yeah, that's what 2.8 is like. I don't know if that was 2.9. We weren't measuring here. Uh, but that's what that is like. And it is nice. So, yeah. If you guys have any questions, drop them in the comment section. I'm going to wrap it up here. Thank you guys for watching. And I will see you guys in the next one. Peace.